Hello, and welcome to today's lesson here at the Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. We are located at 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37403. Good evening, beloved saints. Thank you for being with us for our Wednesday night Bible study on this March the 30th, 2022. Thank God for another time to allow us to come together to study the Holy Word of God. And as we study, I pray that you have your, your Bible ready. Go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 7. As you are aware, we've been doing our uh, Bible study series out of Matthew chapter 7. So go ahead and turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. And we will look at three verses out of Matthew chapter 7, verses 21, 22, and 23. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21, 22 and 23 again Bible in hand because this is Bible study have your notepad for note taking and a pen and pencil to uh, take your notes with and I pray that the Lord is giving you heart to take notes as we study God's holy word and as always we express if there is any questions or concerns about anything that we present in our Bible study presentation please do not hesitate to give us a call here at the church at 423 266-0083. Leave us a message if we don't answer the phone. I promise you we will get back with you, with you in, a, in, a, in a diligent way. And our response and our answers will always be biblically based on the foundation of God's Word. So we welcome any concerns or questions that you might have over anything that we study as we study the Word of God. Again, I want to thank you and say I appreciate so many of you tuning in for our Bible study and I pray that the Word of God is being taught clearly with understanding that we might eat and feast of God's Word and become stronger in nourishment spiritually from the Word of God so again you ought to be at Matthew chapter 7 and again our in, uh, focus tonight will be verses 21 22 and 23 now as you're aware as we've been studying out of Matthew chapter 7 Leading up to where we're going tonight, we started out at the beginning of the chapter where we, the Word of God, Jesus is teaching His disciples, His pupils, His followers, how we are not to judge in a hypocritical fashion. We do declare what's right and what's wrong in that regard, but we have no way of placing any soul into hell. That's God's business, and we're going to look at that tonight. But we dealt with on how we are to not be, again, pretenders, you know, just actors, just falsehood. And again, that aligns with where God has taken us tonight. So how we judge, but we don't judge uh, from a condemn condemnation standpoint. We do call right, right, wrong, wrong, but we're not hypocritical. And then we, Jesus taught us how we are to do us, treat others as we want to be treated. That's, that's being Christ-like. We treat others the way we want to be treated, that we respect, and in a manner that's, that's, that's aiding and, and, and supplying what uh, others may need that, that we come in contact. We help folk. We're here to help and to assist the way Christ helps and assists us. And then as we ventured on, Jesus was teaching us as his followers how the way to Christ, the way to eternal glory is a narrow way. Broad is the way of destruction, and the Bible says there are many that go that way, but there are few that find the narrow way, the way of Christ. And, and again, this is leading us into our lesson for tonight. And we looked at what a good tree and a bad tree. Good tree being those who the Lord uses by His power and His might to declare truth, the biblical truth, biblical uh, knowledge from the Word of God. Not corrupt fruit, bad fruit, man's te teachings, man's inklings, things that tickle a person's fancy. That's bad, corrupt stuff. There are those who are good and those who are bad. Those who are who produce uh, uh, nutritionist, nutritional uh, food for thought from the Word of God, and those who produce bad, corrupt uh, teachings. And so it all goes back to the teachings of God. But those who teach badly. We left off on last week. The Bible says they will be hewn down or cut down and cast into the fire. They have no hope. That's what the Word of God teaches. And He says, "What what is taught 
would be identified, would, would be made known. And so, again, as I stated on last week and I state this week, it is very important that the Word of God is rightly divided. The truth of God's Word is correctly presented as much as God would allow. I am a finite creature, and any teaching that comes from me biblically comes from the Lord. And it is my prayer as we study the Word of God, God will rightly place the truth of His Word within me because it has eternal ramifications. There, there are eternal consequences. And what we're going to look at tonight are some of these, con well, the cons not some, the consequence of where a soul goes when a soul departs from this world. And let me say this, as the Word of God says, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Saved or unsaved, believer, non-believer, sheep, goat, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, which are you? We're going to look at that tonight. The importance of you knowing where you are. Are you a sheep? Or are you a goat? Are you a believer? Or are you a non-believer? Or are you one who stands on the, 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 the truth of God's word? Or are you a pretender? Or a hypocrite? Because Jesus knows. And that's the bottom line. He knows. And we're going we're gonna to make that even more clearly as we go into the word of God. Understand the day of judgment, which is also known as the final judgments, judgment, is when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will judge the living, which is the quick, the living, and the dead, spiritually speaking. Those who are spiritually alive in Christ, those who are spiritually dead in Christ. There is a judgment day, a final day of judgment. This day is coming before Jesus destroys the old heaven and the old, and the old earth. Because the, this earth, earth and heaven, this earth and heaven that is inhibited now is corrupted with sin, and so it will absolutely will it must be destroyed. And the day of judgment, the final day of judgment, is coming. Believers as well as unbelievers will stand before Jesus Christ. All that's why I stated earlier. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. Believers and unbelievers will stand before Jesus Christ. The unbeliever will be exiled from God's presence to eternal damnation. Point, point, point clip. There is no, no will, if, ands, or buts. The unbeliever will be banished. Will be sent away to eternal damnation. The believer those who are the sheep, those who are fully convinced of God, by God, will, be, will receive full comprehension of God's amazing grace. We only see in part right now. But on that day of judgment as a believer, God will give us full understanding of how gracious He is to us. And He's going to give us a part of understanding today as a believer to see how gracious God is to a believer's soul. Beloved, it is a blessing. It's a blessing from God to be a believer. Count it with joy that the Lord Jesus Christ knows you. Because everyone, you hear this phrase so often, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. You hear people say that. That is not the catalyst behind eternal salvation. The premise, the, 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 the driving point is does the Lord know you? Because we'll look at the scriptures here and the word of God, beloved, is so solid about the clarity of who will inherit the kingdom of God, eternal glory. And, for, and who will be banished and sent away. Those who still will confess that he is Lord, but they will be banished. So eternal salvation is not based on one saying, I know the Lord. Don't be impressed by that. That means nothing when it comes to 
eternal salvation. What is important does the Lord Jesus Christ know you? This is why 2 Peter 1 and 10 says, Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Verse 11 of 2 Peter chapter 1 says, For so an entrance shall be ministered or rendered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That entrance that will be supplied and administered unto those abundantly or to those who know without a shadow of a doubt that they have been divinely invited by God to be saved. That's what the calling is. God called your name. And then God chose you. Elected you. And it is, it's not a shadow of doubt. In that believer's mind. Or heart. Inwardly. That they are saved. Inwardly. Now understand. Inwardly. That believer knows. That believer will not take down. That believer will stay boldly. I know. That I'm saying. Ain't no wish you watch. I hear people saying, ah, I just want to make it in. Well, believe it or talk like that. Uh, you hear them say, uh, 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 I'm doing my best. Just a, a true believer knows without a shadow of a doubt. I'm saying, God has called me by name. God has plucked me out, chosen from the many who will perish. And so we speak assuredly, we don't speak with doubt. Not a true believer. Because we know when we depart this earth, as verse 11 of 2 Peter says, our interest, we will be ministered abundantly into everlasting life in the kingdom of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We know that. Ain't no doubt in our mind. I'm saying that, beloved, because there are those who say they know the Lord, but they don't know that. They can't speak that assuredly they cannot make their calling an election sure they're wavering and that is a dangerous place to be when your soul eternal soul eternal soul salvation is on the line that's a dangerous place to be write this down in your notes and turn there quickly because it's Bible study. We're going to do these three verses. But I'm driving this point home because there is a separation. There is a distinction. There is, there are those, there's two type of claims. There are two type of claims of Jesus Christ. A false claim. A false claim is one that truly don't know the Lord. Like they think they do. And there's a true claim. Those who are known of the Lord. Jesus knows them. And so there's a true claim. And in Matthew chapter, chapter 25, verse 31, starting at verse 31, the Bible says, the Bible, again, this is Bible study. And that's why I write that down, refer back to it, because I won't read all these scriptures out of Matthew chapter 25, but I'm highlighting some, and I want you to read those passages we don't read in between. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, he's coming back, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. That's the judgment seat. The throne of judgment. Where the final judgment will take place. Verse 32. And before him, before Jesus Christ, shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another there's a separation from the false claim to the true claim the bible says he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats there, there's a false claim the goats there's a true claim the sheep, Jesus Christ, is going to separate. Separate. Verse 33 of Matthew chapter 25. And he shall set, place the sheep on his right hand. That's the believers. 
on his right hand, but the goats, the non-believers, on, on the left. Look at verse 34. Then shall the king, that's the judge, that's Jesus Christ, say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father. Inherit, that's that divine invitation. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you when? From the foundation of the world. That is very important because before anything came into existence, God had already chosen himself a people. That's why I hate cliche when people say he didn't have to do it, but he did. Yes, he did, because before the world was even formed, he had already chosen who the sheep will be. Before there was a it, when, where, Jesus knew, the Lord knew who his sheep was. The importance, again, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, I want you to continue reading in your independent study, study verses 35 through 40. Let's skip down to verse 30, I mean, I'm sorry, verse 41 out of Matthew chapter 25. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, that's the goats, the non-believers, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Notice what it says. Prepare for the devil and his angels and the goats who will be placed there with them into eternal damnation forever. I want you to continue to read 42, 43, 44, 45. We're going to 46. And these, for verse 46 of Matthew chapter uh, 25. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal. There is a separation. You got to know without a shadow of a doubt. You have to know that your calling and election is sure, is firm, is steadfast, that the Lord has called you. You are, the, you are one of the ones he has called before the world was even formed, that he, he has decided to say before he said, let there be. Before he spoke anything into existence. That's powerful stuff. That's powerful truth. And so don't ever make the statement. He didn't have to do it but he did. Yes he did. If he promised it. If he said it. He had to fulfill it. So he had to do it. And he did do it. That's grace beloved. That's grace. Amazing grace. Don't tamper and water down. What God has done. And as believers, be steadfast, be firm in your belief on what the Lord has done. And he just depicted it here in Matthew chapter 25, those verses that we just covered. There is a separation. Sheep, goat, right hand, left hand. Which, which side will your soul be? You better be sure. You better know without a shadow of a doubt. Not wavering. If a person claims to be saved. But has no hunger for God's word. No growing hatred of sin. No growth in godly living. He needs to examine whether he is truly in the faith or not. Let me say that again. Because there are those who might be vacillated, might be unsure. If a person claims to be saved, but has no hunger for God's word, what we're doing here in Bible study, I hunger for the word of God. I hunger for the knowledge of God. I hunger for understanding. And as a believer, if you are a believer, you and I cannot get enough of God's word. That's why everything else is vanity. Because again, this world will be destroyed on judgment day. We don't put our focus on the things of this world and get so consumed with that. We ask the Lord, Lord, increase my hunger, my desire for understanding. Lord, show me truly who I am. When I see my sinful nature rise up in me, I should hate that within me. 
in my flesh, the embodiment of wrongdoing and disobedience. If there's no, 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 no hatred of the sinful desires in your flesh, you're not saved. No growth in godly living. Examine. That's why I say examine where you are. Because Jesus makes it clear in these three passages of scripture. He makes it clear who he knows and who is just superficially expressing their knowledge of Jesus Christ. When I say superficially, that's just saying it from the outside, from the exterior. There is no inward. Remember last week when we studied that there are those wolves who are inwardly ravenous wolves. They have no hunger for the Lord. Inwardly, they are dead. They're not alive. And there's only few who look to Jesus Christ. There are many who go in the way of destruction, but only a few that go the narrow way of Christ. So now we go into our lesson. I hope that has made sense, and I hope it has been explained clearly. If not, please don't hesitate to call and inquire. Matthew chapter 7, we're back over in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. The Bible says in verse 21 of Matthew chapter 7, Not everyone that saith unto me, this is Jesus speaking now, Jesus teaching his disciples, Jesus teaching his pupils, Jesus teaching his followers, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Those who speak like angels, and there are those who speak angelic. They got all the religious mannerisms. They, they, they have the clothing, the outwardly clothing of being sheep. But inwardly, they are spiritually dead. So, those who speak like angels, but their lives or like they live like devils. They they can they can put on this facade. They can put on this pretense. They can act. But their lives are like devils. That's not everyone in verse 21. They are saying, Lord, Lord, but again, it's superficial. It's on the surface. Anything that's superficially clear cleaned is just cleaning off the top. There's no deep down inward cleaning. It's not behind the, 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 the couch and under the table. It's just superficial. And so that not everyone, those are those who are superficial. They look good on the outside. But on the inside, they're full of dead men, bones. They're just religious. Not everyone that saith unto me, Jesus is speaking, Lord, Lord. Notice now, they say, Lord, Lord. But notice, if G Jesus is so accurate in his teaching. They don't say, my Lord, my Lord. They say, Lord, Lord. It's religious jargon. It's religious speaking. So Jesus says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Not my Lord, my Lord. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, Jesus teaches, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to happen. They will not go just because of what they express and say. That's not good enough to say, I know the Lord. That's not good enough, beloved. That could be superficial. It's exteriorly, but it's not interiorly. The chief view is not the Lord for these individuals. Their chief focus is not the Lord. Their focus is self-gratification, self-satisfaction, and the, the pleasure of pleasing men. It's not about honoring Christ, glorifying the Lord. It's for their own self-gratification and self-satisfaction. And there are many out here. That's why broad is the way of destruction. They may present themselves in the visible church. And we have them in the visible church here on the earth. But the Bible says they will not inherit life in glory with God. It is so many people 
they 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 print print and walk around and they like peacocks as if in, in the visible church on the earth as if they are sheep but they're not beloved they're goats they have not been chosen they have not been elected <laughs> notice he says but he that doeth the will of my father which in heaven those who do the will of the father genuinely truly for real look to Jesus that's what I was saying earlier we are bold about our belief. We're bold about who Jesus Christ in our, is in our lives. We are not ashamed to acknowledge Jesus Christ. And it's genuine. Those are the ones who are committed, dedicated. Those are the ones who truly trust and rely and believe on Jesus Christ for righteousness, for salvation, for eternal life. We know we cannot do anything apart from Jesus Christ. We live, we move, we have our being because of Jesus Christ. Those, that latter part that says, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, those are, with, again, without a shadow of a doubt, know Jesus Christ is our all in all. He is our Alpha, our Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. He's everything to us. And we're not ashamed to let it be known. And the only reason is because he has empowered us. And when did he do it? Before the foundation of the world. It just didn't happen. Whoop, there it is. He had already, before the world was formed, decided to make us his sheep and place that spirit of gratitude within his people. And, and, and again, we know it's not about us. It's no, not about me, myself, and I. It's about Jesus Christ and his glory. And if you read, when you read over in Matthew 25, it's, it will be shown in how we can aid and be benevolent and supportive of others who are sick, who are in prison, who are hungry, who are thirsty. We are dedicated to the things in the ways of Christ. Those who are sheep. But again, not everyone that saith unto me, Jesus says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Heaven, verse 22. Many, catch this, in verse 22, many will say to me in that day, what day is that you may ask? That's the day of judgment. That's the day of judgment. When those who are not the sheep or the goats, they will say, they will speak. Notice what they will say. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, notice they're not saying, my Lord, my Lord. They're acknowledging, Lord, Lord, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, believer as well as unbeliever, on the day of judgment. Many will say to me in that day, the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Yeah, they will say, in thy name, in thy authority, I prophesied. I spoke well of you. In thy name, I cast out demonic beings. In thy name, I did miracles. And we've seen that. We've seen things that in our flesh, ooh, look at that miracle that this TV evangelist did. That doesn't make them saved unto eternal salvation. Look at these people who speak in these unknown tongues. <laughs> that does not put them in glory, in eternal glory. <sighs> there, were, there were seven sons of Siva who went to this man who had a demonic spirit in him. And they went in the name of Jesus and in the name of Paul. Now the spirits looked at these seven sons of Siva and that, the, the spirit, that demonic spirit that was inside that man looked at these seven sons of Siva and they acknowledged Jesus we know, Paul we know, but you we do not know. And that man who was possessed by those demonic spirits jumped on those seven sons of Siva who tried to go and prophesy and do miracles and, and speak in the name of Jesus and that's, he, 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 he beat them down naked into the down to the undergarments 
They went in the name of Jesus and in the name of another man, Paul. So again, just for one to say, I prophesied in thy name. I cast out dead devils in thy name. And in thy name done many wonderful works, miracles. Do not be impressed with what you see or hear or come across. We have miracles that were done by a, a donkey, Balaam's donkey. That was a miraculous thing. Judas, who was right there with Jesus Christ, he was one of the twelve. He had been empowered as the other twelve to, to cast out demons. He had been empowered to prophesy and speak well of God. But Judas was one who was the son of perdition. He, before the world was formed, was chosen to be a goat to be sent to hell. So again, many will say to me in that day, that judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful nurse works. And I told you, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, but this next verse is going to drive it home, beloved. Just for a person to say, I know the Lord. Just because you sing in the choir, say, I know the Lord. Just because you usher in the usher ministry, say, I know the Lord. Just because you serve in the deacon ministry, say, I know the Lord. Just because you preach the word of God, and say, I know the Lord. Just because you do anything, say, I'm doing it in the name of Jesus. And I know the Lord. I started off with saying that when it boils down to it, that carries no merit. It carries no weight. Notice what, what Jesus says in his teaching in verse 23. Jesus says, and then will I, first person or singular, it doesn't matter what they said. It doesn't matter what they said they did. Jesus says, and then will I profess. That word profess means Jesus would declare openly and speak freely. And that word, ooh, that word profess means Jesus promise. And remember, God, the Lord is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent or change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So when Jesus says, and then what I profess, then what I declare openly, then what I speak freely, then what I promise. Now, Jesus Christ is omniscient. Omniscience means he's all-knowing. He knows who his sheep are. He knows who the goats are. He knows who he has embodied and empowered and enabled to make their calling and election sure. And he knows who he has decided to cast into eternal damnation. He knows. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He is the creator of everything. He brought everything into being. So it is no shock when there's a soul for Jesus to cast into hell. He already knows who he is invited to eternal glory. And if you are the ones who know without a shadow of a doubt, this is why we praise and glorify God. Because notice what he says. And then will I profess. I will openly declare. I will speak freely before the angels. Remember back in when we talked about in a... In 2 Peter 1 and 10, 11 says, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you. See, the angels in heaven, all the saints of God are there welcoming all the souls that are coming in, the sheep of God that will hear, well done. They're welcoming. Jesus says, openly, I will profess, I will promise unto them that, notice what he says, I, not might, I, never, knew you. I, I, want, I want that to be understood. Jesus says, all those who said, Lord, Lord, all those say, I know the Lord. All those say, I did this in the name of the Lord. I did this in the name of the Lord. I did this in the name of the Lord. Jesus said, then will, Jesus says, and then will I profess unto them, the goats. I, first person of sing, first person singular, never knew you. That word new there means the intimacy 
or to spiritually have saved, to spiritually have given eternal life, to spiritually have made a sheep to be placed on the right hand of God or on the left. He says, for them, I profess, I never knew you a goat. You on my left hand. I, and we see, we can already see what's going to happen to those who he never knew. And where he places them on the left hand. We've already covered some scripture on this. If you're saved, I thank God I'm saved. I thank God for the word of God. I thank God for the truth of God's word. If you're in that few, many have called, but few are chosen. If you're in that few, beloved, thank God. Thank the Lord. Don't be ashamed. Because notice again, Jesus says in verse 23, as I close, and then will I profess unto them. Those who started out when Jesus said, not everyone that saith unto me. This is what Jesus is going to say unto them. I never knew you. Intimately, spiritually, I don't know who you are. Then he says, depart from me. Go away. That word depart, go away from me. Go away from my presence. Where is he telling, where is he sending them to? To eternal damnation. The goats, the unbelievers, those who have not been made righteous. He says, depart from me. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, lawlessness, unrighteousness. So all that they profess, all that they say they did, Jesus says all that they did was works of iniquity. It wasn't righteous because it was self-gratification, self-satisfaction, self-indulgence. It wasn't to the glory of God doing and what he forever shall do. I told you, we went to Matthew chapter 25, how he welcomed us to be on the right hand of God. And, and, and he said, welcome me and well done, my good and faithful servant. Been faithful over a few things, but I'm going to make you rulers over many. That ought to take precedent in your heart. Because, again, there are those walking around here say, I know the Lord. They will die, stand before the judgment seat of God, and judgment seat of Jesus Christ. And Jesus will say, I never knew you. Depart, ye worker. Depart from me, ye worker. You ye that work iniquity. If you know, without a shadow of a doubt, that you say, the love saints of God, <laughs> praise and worship and bless his holy name. You see, last, my last statement, being united with Christ is life eternal. Being separated from Christ is hell. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you use your servant, your vessel, to rightly divide your truth. And for those of us who are believers of Jesus Christ, who are your sheep, who, you have, who we know our souls will be placed on your right hand, Lord, we glorify and we are grateful and thankful to the uttermost of the eternal salvation you have given us through Jesus Christ. Lord, as, as you taught us in the beginning of Matthew chapter 7, we, we have no right to judge unto condemnation. Salvation is of the Lord. And so, Lord, this is my prayer for any that's that's in the sound of my voice and under the teaching of the word of God, the word of God, that you, if they, if they have not made their calling and election sure in the Lord, that it is your will that before the world was even formed, before the foundation of the world, you were saved. I don't know who you will depart salvation to. That's not for me to say. But I do pray, I do pray, I do pray that whomever is listening in right now, if the manifestation of your Holy Presence has not been revealed, please do so. I pray it is in the will that you would move and impress upon the souls of those who are hearing that uh, have not acknowledged Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that you would give them their acknowledgement 
to acknowledge you as Lord and Savior because the day is coming soon and very soon when all of our souls, believers and unbelievers, will stand before the throne of judgment, that final day of judgment, and either hear, well done, or depart. Thank you for making me a believer, and I pray on behalf of all the believers, thank you for saving our souls. Thank you for doing for us what we could not do. We praise and bless the name of Jesus Christ, the righteous judge. It's in the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.